Hello everyone, today I wanted to show you something different that I've not done on my channel before. Um, I've been doing a lot of paint pouring lately and I've absolutely got addicted to it. It's so much fun and for those of you that already do paint pouring, um, I wanted to show you how you can get some really good cells without actually using silicon because as you probably know if you've been doing these pours, when you use silicon you have problems you have to clean it all off before you can resin it or varnish it in any way so I've done some paint pours that I've got some really nice results with cells and not actually had to use silicon at all so I just absolutely love this one and I think I think this one looks like a volcanic eruption that's what that's what I see in this one. I haven't resin this one at all. This is just what I did a few days ago, and it's all nicely dried. Um, but it's got some lovely cells and some lovely lacing in it. And I just wanted to show you how you could get some similar sort of results um, without using silicon or Aussie flow troll because. <coughs> I know a lot of people use Aussie Flow Troll, and I have actually ordered some off eBay just to, so I can test it out, but I haven't got it at the moment. So um, I'm trying to find ways to get good results without using the Aussie Flow Troll. So I did sign up to the um, Shelly Art course for doing the lovely blooms that she does, and what I'm going to do with this one today is I'm going to use um, this it's ordinary Valspar paint and it's ordinary just interior white emulsion silk emulsion and I'm going to use that just to cover the canvas I've given it a really good stir you really have to stir these paints well to make sure that all the binding agents are mixed in well and if you don't you can get some problems but if, as long as you mix it well, a good five minutes, you won't have any problems with it. And this consistency is just right for what I want for this painting. So I'm putting a good amount on the canvas and I have taped the bottom of the canvas with um, frog tape and I've got the little pins in the bottom to keep it off the table just to, so it makes it easier for me now and I like to just get my little spatula and spread it all around the canvas let it go over the edges now this white emulsion is quite a reasonably price, a lot cheaper than buying or using the tube paints for this sort of thing as well so don't be afraid to put a good layer on and let it all run over the sides, cover all the sides one thing with this um, white emulsion paint is don't be tempted to torch it to get the bubbles out because it's not the same as ordinary craft emulsion, artist emulsion. So it does burn very easy. It will tend to scorch and it can also dry out a lot quicker if you use a torch. It'll have like a, a skin on it, which you don't want. You don't want the top layer drying quickly like that with your with your little blow torch so I do put a good covering on because then we can tip some off as we're tilting the canvas so that's just nicely covered that and then with the colours I've got is this gorgeous green it's absolutely beautiful and this is um, Pebio 
Do, oh, I need my glasses. Now. I've got my glasses on. Get my glasses on now so I can actually see. There is. This is heavier iridescent green, yellow. So that's what I'm using for this one. And also a beautiful pearl lilac. Can you see the consistency? I've got these so. It forms a little heap and that stays for just a second and then just disappears. And I've mixed these colours. Oh, that's a uh, trade that first. That's Pearl Lilac by Arteza. And then I've got a beautiful gold colour. And this is Iridescent Precious Gold by Pebio. And that's that one. My pouring medium for this is this uh, Valspar wood and metal. The base C that hasn't actually got any colour in it. So it's base C. There, look. And it's the V700. So it's the when they mix the colours, this is from B&Q because I'm in the UK, when they mix the colours, um, that's what they use as the base. So they put the colour in and give it a good mix. Got lots of bubbles in this. And then I mix it with polyurethane varnish. And the one, I'm just testing this one at the moment, so I'm hoping it's going to be all right. Um, but it's just a polyurethane floor varnish, gloss varnish. And that was just from B&Q. So I mix that um, two parts, the paint and one part varnish. So all we're going to do today is get some of these colours on here. So I've mixed the pouring medium and paint to get a nice consistency like that and it's about well it depends what sort of paint you use because different paints um, have different thicknesses obviously and the I think it's about for this Pebio I mixed about a tablespoon of the Pebio paint to two tablespoons of the pouring medium. So all we're going to do today is we're just going to get some paint on this canvas and there's a lot I'm going to do a swipe today but there's lots of different ways you can do these and this is just one way and I just like to drizzle it around I mean, I have been doing them where I just do the line of paint and then all the colours on top of each other. But I'm just going to try this one today because I like to do it. You get such different results with how you put your paint on. So for now, I'm going to just do it like this. Put my gold on. And then I'm going to put my green on. You just cover the, you don't need to cover the whole canvas with this paint, but you'll get used to how much paint you need to put on for the size of the canvas. This little tub here, there's not a lot of paint in there, but I won't use anything like this full tub. I'll have, that'll be enough to do about four of these canvases. And then my lilac. This is Arteza. Arteza. I've got. Um, I bought a lot of the Arteza paints when I was when they was on when they had Prime Day and also the New Year's sales and 
I've got, got quite a lot of them, so I absolutely love these Arteza paints. And this is a metallic. Plenty on. Make sure you get a, a nice evenly covered canvas so you've got the colours are evenly covering about the same amount I'm going to put on of each colour. You don't want to mix your colours because otherwise you'll end up with a muddy, a muddy painting which we always try and avoid. Unless that's the look you're going for and then if that's the look you're going for then that's absolutely fine because with any art or crafts, I always say you do it your way. There's no right or wrong way. You go with whatever you want to do. But for me today, I'm going to just nicely cover the canvas like that. And then for my cell activator, I've got tight, uh, doing a black one. So I've got Amsterdam. And this is oxide black and all I've done with this is mix it with you don't have to use this ink I've got the same good results by with not using this Liquitex ink but I've decided to put a little bit of Liquitex ink in it and this is carbon black <clears throat> just a little squirt and then mixed with water to get quite a runny consistency see it's a bit more runny than the colouring the coloured paints it just forms a tiny little peak and then disappears straight away so it's a bit runnier than the others I'm just going to give that a quick torch on the colours let me just get my other lighter I need to get a new torch because this one doesn't work. The work gas works, but the clicky bit doesn't work for some strange reason. It's just stopped working. So I'm just going to give that a quick torch over those colours, trying to avoid the white. Yeah, that's enough of that. And then what I'm going to do is get my, you can use, you can use kitchen roll or this is that blue roll that I've got. So I'm going to use a piece of that to do my swipe. I get through so much kitchen roll on that and I think this blue roll works really well and it's quite a lot cheaper than kitchen roll so I've been using this lately so I just put that under there and I give it a good drizzle of the black cell activator across the top and then all we're going to do with this I like to actually fold that in half so you've got a thicker piece to do it with and then get it to where it touches the black paint and you're just going to drag that black paint over the top of your colours. I'm just going to sit down the side so I'm just going to do that down the side. So you can already see these beautiful cells coming up. And that's with absolutely no silicon or Aussie Floatron. Could give give it a little torch now to see if we can get any more come through and then once we start to stretch this that will make all those gorgeous cells a little bit bigger just a little torch 
and then we can start tilting and because we've got plenty of the white paint underneath it gives us that much more movement This is where you've got to have a bit of patience. See those gorgeous cells? They're just lovely. They're just all stretching over the edge. Get the edge nicely covered. Back to the center. back to that corner you really have got to get have some patience with this because it does move quite slowly back to the center Also, with having the pins underneath, it makes it a lot easier to tilt it because you can hold on to the pins. Oh, that is looking gorgeous. I, that's one that I love doing these because you never quite know what you're going to get from these pores. When you do a paint pour, you just never know how it's going to turn out. It turns, you can do exactly the same thing six times and you'll get six different results patience is a virtue how gorgeous is that beautiful Back to the center. And then down to the other corner. very slow but it's well worth the effort for the results you get it's absolutely gorgeous it's just going over the edge now is nicely covered that'll all run down there nicely got that edge covered and then we just let that settle how stunning is that look at all those cells all those gorgeous cells no silicon so we can when that all dries nicely we can let it dry for about three weeks. It takes good three weeks to dry before you can resin it or anything. But how stunning is that? Let me bring it up so you can see all that beautiful cell and lacing with no Aussie Floetrol and no silicone. And you can still get some fantastic results. Absolutely beautiful. It still amazes me every time I do one of these how beautiful they can turn out. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had a lot of scrapes. I've scraped a lot of canvases and tiles. And if you're practicing, I really would suggest 
practice on some tiles, just some little 4x4 four four tiles because you don't want to be wasting your expensive canvases. How gorgeous is that? Such gorgeous colours. So I hope you'll have a go at doing these because they're such good fun and they are so addictive to do. So if you like watching me do these and learning some tips on how you can do your own, please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification so you get notified when I bring out new videos. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.